In this application, we have a rotating cylinder and we want to inspect the entire product. It's rotating on a motor controlled by a VFD, variable frequency drive. Once it's rotating at a constant speed, this camera will be triggered by the PLC one time. And what we want to do is then have the camera trigger itself in a repeatable time such that it takes multiple pictures with some overlap so you can inspect the entire surface of this cylinder only once it's completed say 370 degrees or more of rotation will the camera then set pass or fail bits to the PLC. We have here our vision program on the left and a control panel just to show how it works on the right. To begin with, we've got this command register, and I'm using this to simulate the command, the integer command we're going to get from the PLC over Ethernet IP. If I type in 12, you can see that it gets reflected back from the VPM as 12. And if I put in 0, that's not a valid command. If I put in 1, which is the command to begin repeat triggering, you can see the pass reset, and you can see that I'm executing on a periodic basis, and the pass counter is incrementing, but I'm not setting any pass or fail status. If I look at the reset, I can see that it ran one time, and we'll get into that later. The reset runs when you first trigger it to clear out your counters and your pass fail outputs. If I put in a command of three and trigger, then you can see the pass came on and we stopped triggering. That was a simple example. Now we'll, I'll add an image for a bad part to get it to fail. Now I've added one bad and uh, two good images, which is a little more interesting. So again, we'll do one and get the repeat going here. And then when I put in three, we can see that it failed because all it takes is one fail to cause a failure. Okay, what on earth is going on here? First of all, let's reset these counts. We have a couple of tasks. This image in task, you can see it's triggered by this event image in. Next, we have this retrigger event triggered by a scheduled event. What scheduled event is it? Well, it's from our event schedule tool. We'll get into that more later. This is what retriggers when this when this task executes. This tool will re-trigger the camera and run the image in task. Finally, we have this reset that resets the pass-fail counters, and it puts the step sequence to 2. Step 0 is not valid. Step 1 is to reset variables. Step 2 is to keep re-triggering at that set interval until the end of time or until sequence step three. Obviously, we would want to look at the number of execution times and stop after a little while and just declare everything bad. This multiple branch instruction has three different basic expressions that's looking for this data instance called sequence step to equal one, two, or three. And you can see here, the multiple branches for it are 1, 2, and 3. And they're in that order because the multiple branch instruction, as soon as it comes to the first true statement, it won't execute any others. Step 1 calls the reset variable task that we looked at earlier. Step 2, this is where everything really happens. This group is for the inspections, which are really these two. Both of these have to pass, and I'm keeping track of that with this pass-fail tool. This is a special kind of branch, and you can execute all these instructions under the pass or all these instructions under the fail. And um, you, know, you could set the outputs here, but what we wanted to do was not set them until we were done triggering as commanded by the PLC, so I put everything up here in this basic statement. But in this pass-fail instruction, it comes with counters. It counts the, the number of times 
it passed and the number of times it fails. When you set up this pass-fail instruction, it will show all of the tools above it. And we have this checkbox for um, instructions we can use. So we want both of these to pass, but whatever tools you want can go right in this point in the logic and all the rest of it can remain the same. To summarize again really quickly, event scheduler properties has this interval time. Here is our ethernet IP that is going to sending us over an uh, integer that we're using as a command. I'm storing it here in this data instance I'm calling sequence step to be able to simulate from CPM. This basic tool is deciding at the end when the PLCs commanded the camera to stop repeatedly triggering to look at the counts and um, set outputs to either passed or failed. How I'm doing that is with this branch statement. If the PLC sends a one and you trigger, you'll first call reset variables. And this resets, we can see the pass fail counters. It also sets the sequence to a value of two. So then the next time this triggers executed, we'll run this set of instructions. There's a group here to show the inspections and this pass fail that again in the setup you can check and we're using the counters. I'm going to click on the properties for that pass fail. We're using the counters to keep track of how many times did it fail and how many times did it pass. So if it fails even once, then the whole part is deemed a failure. Once the PLC commands us to stop by sending a three, we'll update these bytes in the Ethernet IP assembly. I threw in a delay and we set the sequence step back to zero. So it does nothing until again commanded by the PLC with a, a value of one to be ready to take the next trigger.